state transformations and then um, range uh, on just this part. We're going to ignore the rest just because we're going to get through it quicker because they'll let you have a little longer with the quiz. But what transformation is happening is the three is at the back. Is the three in the brackets with the X? Is the three in a bracket with an X? Not your question. No. So it's a what? Vertical translation normally. But in trig, it's called a vertical displacement. Only trig. Three up. Couldn't hear you. Still didn't really get it, but that hand, that. Right. Okay. Yes, we can go that way. Okay. So I told you that the minimum and the maximum can be found from the midline and then your amplitude, correct? So the midline is your D value. This is my D value. So my midline has changed. So my midline is at Y equals 3. And then what's my amplitude on this equation? One. It's what's in front. So it's one. So I'm going to go up one, and I'm going to go down one. So what am I maxing out at? A max of one, two, three, four, and a minimum at two. So the way I could actually get the max and min then without having to draw it out every single time is I can say maximum is the D value, the midline, right? We go from the midline plus the amplitude. And my minimum is the D value minus the amplitude. We always start at the midline, which is the D, and we add the amplitude to get to our maximum. Or we start at the D and we subtract our amplitude. So in this case, it would be 3 plus 1, which is 4, or 3 minus 1, which is 2. And then I can just do my range from there. My range is y such that 2 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to 4 y er. Cos and sine result in the same thing. Remember, cos and sine are just a 90 degree shift from each other. They're just a horizontal phase shift away from being each other. So this 2, what is this negative 2? Is it with the x or not? It's not or it would be in brackets, correct? So once again, it's a vertical displacement. Two down. So what's my maximum at? My maximum is D plus amp. My D is negative 2. Plus what's my amplitude? 1. So it's my maximum's at negative 1. And my minimum is at D minus my amplitude. So it's at negative 3. So what's my range? Y such that Minimum, so negative 3, is less than or equal to y, is less than or equal to my maximum, y er. Okay? You guys try 3 and 4. I want what the transformations are and what the range would be. So this has a vertical stretch by a factor of what? 3 about the, so helpful guys, the x-axis. Please stop talking, you're out of control. And then we have a what? What's the 2? Vertical displacement.
two up. My max is going to be D plus amplitude. What's my D? Two. What's my amplitude? Three. So it's five. So you're at a midline of two. Y equals two, correct? And you go up three. So you reach five. Your minimum is D minus amplitude. So you're at a horizontal line of two and you subtract three from it. Now you're at negative one. So this graph is going between negative 1 and 5, which makes sense. That's a distance of 6. Half a distance of 6 is 3, which is my amplitude. So my range would be y such that negative 1 is less than or equal to y, less than or equal to 5, y er. Number 4, you have a vertical stretch. a factor of 2 about the x-axis and a vertical displacement three down. Now our maximum is going to be D plus amp. The midline of this is at negative 3, and then we're going to add 2, so we're going to at negative 1, and then your minimum is D minus the amplitude, so it's at negative 3 minus 2, so it's at negative 5. So this graph, the entire graph is below the x-axis, correct? From negative 5 to 1, negative 1. So my range is y such that negative 5 is less than or equal to y is less than or equal to negative 1, y r. The distance between negative 5 and negative 1 is 4. Half that distance is 2, so the amplitude is 2, so we know we can check it and it's good. We're going to flip ahead two pages, and then we're going to come back to the page in between in a second. I lied. We're going to flip ahead one, two, three, four pages and then come back to the ones in between. We're going to go here. We're going to keep with equations and we're going to go to graphs. Okay, so this equation is more advanced, right? It has way more transformations on it, doesn't it? So it's saying describe the transformations to change y equals cos x to the following. So the cos x graph doesn't have any transformations on it, correct? The original? If the original had transformations, say it had a plus one at the back, then I wouldn't state this plus one, would I? right, because it would already have been up one. Okay, what do we have to remember from transformations with our B value? What do we also have to remember with our C value? Is this okay? Horizontal stretch by factor of a half pi to the right? That answer will be on the diploma. It's wrong. What do we have to remember to do? Take the B value out. If you don't remember that, I told you on the unit tests and on the diploma, it will have that, right? And you're going to be in trouble because it'll have the answer to not taking them out. So the very first step, whether we're in trig or any other transformation, is having to first look there and say, hey, there's not a 1 in front of the x, so my c value is not correct. Remember, I have to have a 1 in front of the x in order to have my c value right. So... I have 2 cos 2 x minus, uh, when I take that 2 out of GCF, I'm dividing, so it's going to be pi over 2 plus 1. So I'm going to do my mapping. x, y, what's it going to become? Anything in here affects my x, correct? So what's my x going to be multiplied by? Half or two? A half, because we always flip it, correct? Mapping and words are the same thing. So we flip it for words, we flip it for mapping. Mapping and words and hearts, remember? Mapping, words. So we're going to have one half x plus pi over two. So whatever we say we do, pi over to the right, we do for mapping, because mapping is just another way of representing the words. 
and then we're going to get 2y plus 1. So my transformations are stretch. I have a vertical stretch. I'm going to go short form, and then you guys are going to do that. Vertical stretch. By a factor of 2 about the x-axis. A horizontal stretch. By a factor of 1 half about the y-axis. Do we have any reflections? Are either of those numbers negative? No, no reflections. Translations, we have a vertical displacement. It's only for trig, remember. One up. And the horizontal phase shift is what they say for trig. Everything else, every other unit, it's translation. For trig, it's horizontal phase shift. Pi over 2 right. I want you to do B. Up here, I want you to do B. I want you to do transformations and mapping. Try it out. Remember that this 2 has to come out of the 2 pi over 3. See how you do. So we're going to go y equals 3 cos. Take a 2 out, x. And then what you're doing is you're going 2 pi over 3 divided by 2. We agree? Which is the same as 2 pi over 3 times a half, which is pi over 3. 2 is a cancel. It would be 2 pi over 6. It reduces to pi over 3. Plus 2. So we're going to get a vertical stretch by a factor of Uh, 3 about the x-axis, horizontal stretch by a factor of a half about the y-axis. Any reflections? No, nope, no negatives. Does that mean that there's never reflections? No, I just gave you two examples that didn't have negatives. There still can be reflections. And then I have a vertical displacement two up, horizontal phase shift. Pi over 3 right. So mapping, we would have xy becomes, this affects x. So I'm going to multiply by a half and add pi over 3 because those are the opposite. Just like, like words. And then I'm going to multiply by 3 and add 2 for the y. We agree? Okay, now we're going to flip back two pages to all those graphs. If you don't have them in front of you, you'll have to refer back to here. So we're going to flip back two pages to the graph. So right now we're not going to determine the equations today. We're going to determine the equations on Monday, and that's where I lose some people, so we're going to pay close attention. Today what we're going to look at is we're going to get the amplitude off of here. 
the period off of here, okay, and the midline. All right. So my amplitude, you can either do two ways off a graph. You can go the absolute value of the max minus the min divided by 2, or you can say half the distance from the min to the max, correct? So in this case, I could just, I'm going to show it once with the um, formula, and then after that I'm just going to count. So my maximum is 1 minus a minus 1 over 2, which is 2 over 2, which is 1. So I have an amplitude of 1. The other way I can count it is, hey, how far does it take me to get to the, from the bottom to the top? So that's 1, 2. So it's total distance divided by 2. So it's 1. Half the distance, right, from the min to the max. Um, the median or the midline, median value or midline, it's the line that cuts the graph in half. Okay. You can use the formula if you want, max minus min divided by 2. Or you can count up your amplitude from the minimum. So my amplitude's 1, right? If I count my minimum, if I count my amplitude up from the minimum and down from the maximum, they should meet at the midline. So my amplitude is 1, we agree? So if I count up 1 and I count down 1, where do they meet at? the x-axis, which is actually what equation? y equals 0. We agree? If we use the formula, it's going to be 1 um, max plus min. Whoops. 1 um, plus negative 1 divided by 2, which is 0 divided by 2, which is 0. Why would we add them? Because when you add two numbers and divide by two, you're finding the average of those two numbers, are we not? Like if I wanted to take the score of this class, I'd add up all your um, marks, and then I'd divide by however many there are, and I'd have the average mark appear, correct? So if I want the average line between these two, if I just take the max and I add them in, and I divide by two values, I'd get the very middle, which is zero. Or I can just count up my amplitude, count down my amplitude and where they meet. Either of them will get me my midline, okay? But it is a line, so it's at y equals 0. Okay? And the last thing I want to go over is the period. The period is how long it takes to repeat itself. I always try and start from 0 and see if I can get it from there because it's the quickest way. So I'm going to use the green marker. So the period can be found in a few different ways, and that's why people don't like it because there's no set like do this always and it works. Okay? So if I go from a maximum to a maximum, that's the period, correct? From a max, then back to a max, and then it's going to start repeating itself again, correct? Or if I go from a min to a min, that's a period, from a minimum to a minimum, the horizontal distance it takes. Or I can just start at the y-axis and see if it can get it that way. So if I start at the y-axis, I'm actually starting at a what in this case? A maximum, we agree? So I need to go until I hit another maximum, which is right here. Okay, so from a max to a max, you can get the period, which I always joke and say from an ovary to an ovary, you get the period because it looks like a uterus, but ovaries to ovaries is not how you get a period at all. It's from one ovary and then it drops, but, you know, it does look kind of like a uterus, and here's some ovaries. Well, you ovulate and then you get a period, so it has to drop from one ovary, not two, but it could drop from two technically, have more babies. Not fun. Yeah. Bio lesson. Right there. Don't ever think it goes from an ovary to an ovary to get a period. It's not true. It's not how ovulation works. But it can get a period in trig. So that's good. Um, okay. So it took us how long? And this is the reason why I like starting at zero. It's from zero to two pi. So how long did that take? Two pi. So this graph has a period every two pi rather than 28 days, which is a regular cycle. You're welcome. Okay. No, never the 28-day thing, but that's hilarious. Thank you. That just came up. You're welcome. That's, I'm on my toes today, guys. I'm on my toes. I have an extra long weekend, so I've got to use it all up now. Okay. 
So for this graph, if that one, I'm going to do the period first. I like trying to start at the y-axis first because if I can find out how long it takes to repeat horizontally, it's a lot easier that way than trying to go from a max to a max here because I have a whole bunch of lines and a whole bunch of lines and I don't know what those lines mean. So I have to find the difference between them. That's complicated. So I'm going to try here. So I'm going to go past the max, past the min. I don't stop here though. Why? Have I started repeating myself yet? No, nope. I keep going. Boom, now past the min. So if I don't, I can go from a max to a max and go from a min to a min at a reverse uterus. <laughs> so funny. Or I can go past the max, past the min, back to the same height. Okay? So past the max, past the min, back to that same height. Okay? And then if you look, what am I gonna, what's going to happen? I'm just going to start repeating again. Correct? So I want to see how long it takes till I don't repeat anymore. Like, just all new graph. So then this is till 2 pi, which is a heck of a lot easier to calculate than from some random thing to some random thing, subtract them. Like, that's not easier. So there is, yes, you can go from max to max always, and you can go from min to min always, but sometimes they don't give you enough values to even be able to go from those ones. Now, how much would each of these ticks be worth? How could I even label this? Remember what I told you to do? Go to pi and count how many ticks there are. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 ticks to get us to pi, correct? So how much is each tick worth? Pi divided by 12. So I do 1 pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 pi over 12, which is pi. 13 pi over 12, 14 pi over 12, 15 pi over 12, 16 pi over 12, and reduce them the whole way along, and I'd have my whole thing labeled. So you can label it, correct? If they didn't label it, you could go along and label it. So the period of this graph is 2 pi. What's the amplitude? So we could use the formula if that's your thing. Absolute value of max minus min divided by 2 works every single time. Or we can count how long it takes to get from min to max. So I can 1, 2. So it's a distance of 2 from the bottom to the top. So what's half that distance? 1. So the amplitude is 1. Like I said, though, you can use this formula. It works every single time. Okay? The midline, then, if I count up my amplitude of 1, down my amplitude of 1, they meet again at the x-axis. So my midline is at y equals 0. So my d value, or my midline, because my d value is my midline, and it's a line, correct? So you can't say 0. Is 0 a line? No, it's a number. You're taught about it when you're little. Okay? So y equals 0. We need a line. Yeah? Okay. I want to flip to the next page. Oops, I don't even know what I just did. Flip to the next page. We're going to look at 6. How do we know if our graphs are in degree or radian mode? Look along the x-axis. If there's a degree symbol, it's degree. If there's no degree symbol, it's radian, OK? So if your x-axis is in um, degree mode, then your period would be in degrees, correct? If your x-axis is in radian mode, then the period would be in radian. So let's go through this one. What's the period of this graph? I'm going to get you to try the bottom ones after this. So I'm going to start here, it looks like. Pass the max, pass the min, back up to that same height. And it looks like 6, maybe? Could I try from a different spot to a different spot? Sure. So I'm going to try from a max to a max. So negative 5 to negative 11. How many do I count? 6. Right? So it's still a period of 6 from two different spots. What's my amplitude? I can go absolute value of max minus min divided by 2 if I wanted to. So it would be absolute value of 3 minus negative 7 divided by 2, which is 5. So that's going to be 10. Or I can go, OK, 7 plus 3 is 10. Half of that, 5. Either way, okay, up to you. Whatever way you like, you do, okay? And then the D, you can do max plus min divided by 2 and find the average between the max and min, which is the midline. So I can go max, which is 3, plus negative 7 divided by 2, 
is negative 4 over 2, which is negative 2. Okay? So I know I have a midline at negative 2. I can also show it with amplitude, correct? I can count up 5, down 5, and they should meet at negative 2. So I'm going to count down 5. I'm going to count up 5. They should meet at the same spot. If they don't, your amplitude is wrong, just so you know. That's a way to check your amplitude. And they meet at y equals negative 2. Okay? I just want you to do this one. 7, that's it. And you have homework before we run out of time. So the amplitude, I count up 1 until I get to 7, which is a distance of 8. So 8 divided by 2 is 4. My midline or my d value for my equation. I count up 4. I count down 4. And we meet at... y equals 3. Or I can use the formulas, correct? Is there anything wrong if you use formulas? No. Is it wrong if you use the formulas and memorize them wrong and then use them wrong on the test? Yes, that would suck. So you can't just use formulas. You need to actually make sure you know what the amplitude and the midline are so you can check your formulas because some people miss up the um, plus and minus signs on the formulas. Uh, the period of this one, start at 0, pass the max, pass the min back here. That's going to be half the distance, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Half the distance of 4 pi would be 2 pi. Wow, that's a really big part. You can't read that. Okay. Um, on Monday, what we're going to do is we're going to use all this knowledge to come up with the equations of sine and cosine. So we're going to get the A value, the B value, the C value, and the D value. And then all we have left is word problems, and you're done trig one. And then your test is on Thursday. Yeah. So I'm going to post um, the trig one podcast, but like I said, when you get to graphs, you might be overwhelmed, the review, so don't watch that part of it yet. Okay. The questions for homework are...